I downloaded a few different models from trace parts that I want to use as fittings in piping in Creo Parametric. First I have a flange. I also downloaded a reducer and I also have a gate valve. Let's take a look at setting these up in Creo Parametric. The first one that I'll do is the flange component. And I've got some datum planes that I created in here after opening up the model. I need to create a couple coordinate systems for each end of the flange. So let's start off. And let's see, let's create a datum plane through this end over here. I think I just have an edge right over there. So we'll create it through it and then click the OK button. And let's create a coordinate system. And I'm going to hold down the control key and select these other two datum planes. And so that is the origin. Now the rule for the coordinate systems is the Z axis has to point out. Let's do that. I'll go to the orientation tab and DTM1 that I just created, that's going to be for the Z direction. It's got to be pointing out so I need to flip it. And then I can say for the datum plane right now maybe I want that to define the x-axis and that's good now let's go to the properties tab and the standard naming is going to be the word port followed by a number and usually the first port the entry port is port 0 and then you'll have port 1 point port 2 so forth and so on I will click the OK button oh yeah one thing I want to note is that in this case the Y direction doesn't matter but for other components it does matter if you're doing specification driven piping. I'll talk about that for the other components. Let's click the OK button and I'm going to turn off my datum plane visibility for a, actually no, I need one other coordinate system. Let's create a coordinate system and this one will be on this surface and then select the other two datum planes that I want to use to control it and let's go to the orientation that surface should be driving the z direction and z should be pointing out that looks good and for the properties again i'm going to rename this one i'm going to call this one port one and hit the ok button let's turn off the display of all these other different datums here to reduce the screen clutter so i see what i need all right, so my two coordinate systems are set up correctly. Now I need to set up a couple of different parameters in here. And again, setting up these different parameters is only necessary if you are doing specification driven piping. So let's create, go to our model intent overflow and choose parameters. And the first parameter that I need to have in here is one that is called fitting code and let me expand this out to over here we've got a whole bunch of different trace parts parameters that came in here let's click the plus sign to create a new parameter and this is going to be fitting underscore code and it's going to be of the type string let me show you what different values you are supposed to use for this so here we have the different kinds of fitting codes that you can have for a component and this one obviously is a flange so let's plug in the value over here for a to call it a flange and the next thing I need to do if I'm going to be doing specification driven piping is to establish a few different parameters in the entry ports. So let's go to the drop down list over here to change the look in to feature and for the feature that it's going to be let's select port zero. Right now this doesn't have any uh, different parameters in here. Let's click the plus sign and the first one is going to be size and this one is also going to be a string. And the value for this one, this is DN100, diameter nominal 100. So that's good for the first one. The second parameter that we need in this is end code. And this will also be a string. And let's take a look at what the different values should be for end code. 
So there are nine different possible values for ENCODE. And so in this case, we have BW for butt welded, socket welded, SW, screwed, slip on, and we have the various different ones for the flange. So this and the entry end, I'm gonna have that be butt welded, BW, and the other side, I'm gonna have flanged flat face. So for this one, first end, let's change that to BW. That is good. Now let's use the pick icon to repeat those two parameters for the other side. And I'll click and hit the plus sign. And again, we'll create a parameter called size in here. And it's going to be a string with a value of 100 and the plus sign. Let's create our second one for the end type. And it's also going to be a string and this one is going to be flanged flat face. And I just want to make sure I got the parameter right in the other one. Oh, I put end code. Let's get rid of this and add another one. And it's supposed to be end type. String. And BW. And in that way, now I have my model set up. One last thing that I need to throw in here is going to be a point used to align this on the model. And since this is going to go at the end of the segment, uh, the datum point should be located in the appropriate location. And for me, I want the end of this to be uh, at port one. So let's create a datum point and for the reference, I'll select the coordinate system and on. And you can rename it if you want, but you don't have to rename it. So there I have my end type for the corner fitting. Next up, let's take a look at the reducer. And so for the reducer here, we have the entry end. So let's create our coordinate system on that end. So let's choose coordinate system and I'll select the different references that I need for locating it. And the Z axis should be pointing out. Let's change this to Z. And in this case over here, if I'm going to be doing specification driven piping, the Y axis should define the stem orientation. In this case here, I have these uh, different components over here. Those are essentially my stem. So the Y axis should be in that direction, which it is. So that is good. Let's go to the properties tab, call this one port zero and click the OK button. Now for the other end, let's create a, another coordinate system. And through here, let me hold down the control key to select the other different references for defining the origin for the orientation. Again, that surface is going to define Z and we want the Y axis pointing up a little hard to see, but it is pointing up and let's call this one port one and click the OK button. So there we have our two different coordinate systems. Let me create my datum point that is going to be used to align that. And I like to create the datum point in the middle of the component. So let's create a datum plane. I'm going to select this surface, hold down the control key and select the other surface. That way we are getting a nice mid plane in here. And I'm going to create a point on that datum plane. I'm going to hold down the control key and select the axis going through the center of the component. And again, you don't need to rename it. And for this particular component, uh, since it is a reducer, uh, we are going to use a fitting code of inline reducing. So let's go to model intent and then parameters click on the plus sign and we're going to create our fitting code and this is going to be a string and the value is going to be inline reducing. Now let's go to the drop down list and change to feature and let's select the port zero and again this is going to have the two different uh, parameters in here and First one is going to be size. This is going to be a string and it's going to have a value of 40. Let's 
hit the plus sign and create our end type. And this is also going to be a string. And we'll use BW for butt welded. And let's use the pick icon to then select the port one. And this is going to have those two other ones in here. Uh, let's have our size, string, and a value of 25. Hit the plus sign. We're going to have end type and string and BW once more. And since this is a reducer, there's a third feature parameter you're going to have in this coordinate system. And it's going to be called new size. And that's going to be also a string. In this case here, it's going to be the same value as the size parameter. So again, uh, that is required for the additional one if you are changing the size. All right, click the OK button. And in that way, we have our coordinate systems. We have our point that's required. And we have our different parameters. Now, last but not least, we have our uh, gate valve over here, which I downloaded. So let's repeat the process. Let's create our coordinate systems. So I'll click on the coordinate system command and let's select this surface over here. Hold down the control key to get my other different references. Let's go to the orientation tab. The Z axis needs to be pointing out and the Y direction should be pointing up. And so ASM, this should be ASM top to define why Y is pointing up in the STEM orientation. Again, that Y axis orientation only matters if you are doing specification driven piping. Let's go to the properties tab, call this one port zero and hit the enter key and click OK. So there we have our first one. Let's create our second one. Go to coordinate system and select the surface that we're going to locate it on. Hold down the control key to select the other references and go to the orientation tab. The surface is going to define the Z direction. Y is pointing up. That is good. Let's go to the properties tab and call this port one. Click the OK button and already have a datum plane going through the middle. Let's create a center axis for locating the datum point. That's good. And create the point. Since I just created the axis, it was still selected. Hold down the control key to select the assembly uh, datum plane. And that way we have our point for locating this uh, when it's being placed in the piping assembly. Okay, let's create our different parameters. I'll go to the parameters dialog box. Let's click the plus to create our fitting code. And this one is going to be a string. And the value is going to be inline. Let's use the drop down list to create our feature parameters. And let's select here we have port zero and we'll hit the plus sign. We need to have our size and I forget what this one is. So I'm just going to use 100. Actually, it's much bigger than that. Let's make it, I don't know, 400 and hit the plus sign. And then we're going to have our end type, change this to string, give it a value of BW. Use the pick icon to select the other coordinate system and hit the plus sign. We'll create our size. Use the string, change this to 400. Hit the plus sign, create our end type string. And actually, this one is uh, flanged. Uh, let's ch change this one to FLRF. Should have used that one for the other one. No problem. Let's use the plus sign to select this one and change the end type. There we go. That is good. And click the OK button. And that way we have our gate valve set up for 
use in piping, whether we are doing manual piping or we are doing specification driven piping, we've got everything set up in these models in order to use them. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.